I'm Kim Wright. I'm from a little seaside town called New Brighton, which is close to Liverpool. Um, I now live in Ypres and I have created Kim's Battlefield Tours. I remember saying this to my dad as a child walking into a museum and the things that always drew my attention were the everyday objects. Was a bowl, was a fork, was a, a hair comb, something like that. And I would always glance at it and just imagine whose hands have held that bowl and who was it, who were they, what was their story. And I started uh, with my imagination thinking of a superpower. And, um, and my superpower, it's so geeky, but it would be that I could touch an item, close my eyes, and when I open my eyes, I'm exactly where it happened. And then take my hands off and I'm back here again. Uh, I first came to Belgium, I think it's in about 2012. The first time I visited the battlefield was probably a year later. Most tours, you have a definite connection with the person you're with. It's usually a day and the connection grows. And because you're sharing something so powerful, um, especially if it's a family member that they're wanting to visit, what I love is the fact that at the end of the tour, often um, I, I'm embraced in a big hug. When I first met Philip, we had a, it, it was funny because his mother tongue is French, mine of course is English, and we can both maybe meet in the middle with a bit of West Flemish. Those pieces, uh, it's a French cuirassier in 1915. The French army received these helmets, mm -hmm. so is the evolution in between. The pocket watch with the bullet through. Yeah. You knew I would yeah, pick yeah, that yeah. one, didn't you? Remember what I tell you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do remember. That's incredible. Wow. I spotted something and thought, that must be the one. That has to be it. You know, that, that is what I will choose. And it was the, a cigarette box still with tobacco in it, apparently still the original tobacco, cigarette papers and a cigarette rolling machine. <laughs> Does it still smell? No, obviously not. Uh, you can imagine it being a comfort, a way of calming down or just a habit. So I was thinking you can't get more personal than that until um, Philip, he gave me a look and he said, I think you should look at that box first before you pick. From a German story, it's a snuff. <gasps> oh my God, do you think they're from his children? I don't know. Whoa, who is that? Girlfriend. So you had uh, dark hair and three locks of blonde hair. So straight away in my mind, it was the mother's hair and three little blondies, you know, perhaps three children. What I imagine from looking at it straight away, and, and this is my imagination that goes wild. You know, I couldn't help picture three children running around in a sunny field in Germany, uh, you know, the mother calling them in for dinner or something, but their father's away at war. It is a bit like a fairy tale, of course. We've got no idea if this is the case, but I can imagine that in the darkest of his times, you know, potentially when he's, his best friend has just been blown up in front of him or he's just feeling at his worst, he would open that tin and just, you know, maybe smell the hair, maybe touch the hair. I'm just sure it must have brought some comfort or at least perseverance to keep going. Maybe it's in a moment where he thinks, I've had enough of this war, but he opens it and think, you know, but my wife and children are waiting for me. You can't get more personal or closer to the people of history than their hair. <laughs> so um, it was a definite easy decision as soon as I saw that.